What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now, Back to the Past. I'm Alex, and in this video, I wanted to take a look at Evil Dead the Game. Kind of an odd one, maybe. It doesn't really fit. It's a Halloween a horror kind of thing. Why didn't I do it then? Well, we're approaching two years of this thing being out, and I think it's a really interesting game, both in the premise of it, doing something pretty different than the Texas Chainsaw of the world. And I actually like that game quite a bit, but Texas Chainsaw, Friday the 13th, Dead by Daylight. This game really took a, a hard left, you know, when everybody else went right. And I think it stands out, but that's not the only thing we're here to talk about, right? You have, a, I think, a, a pretty original, unique game with the IP of Evil Dead, but a game that has died extremely quickly. Another example of, a, I mean, it's not offline yet, but again, we're approaching two years, and I, I have a feeling over the next year or so, this game is going to be cut. So will it make it two, three years? Maybe. But another example of a game, and even like Texas Chainsaw is kind of experiencing this issue right now, a lot of these cannot live. Like they just do not last. Dead by Daylight, for whatever reason, is like the only one that can last. I mean, I think it's entering year seven or eight and gets many, many players, you know, every single day. These other games just cannot match it. And so I want to talk about all those elements and also, I guess, why it is dying because I don't think it's all the game's fault. I think it's also kind of uh, exterior reasons as well. But let's talk about the game itself. So I remember when this game came out, I remember being excited about it. I'm not a Evil Dead fan. Like, I've seen a few movies. I've seen a few clips. Like, I, I'm not a horror guy. I mean, we've talked about that on, on podcasts now before. But I respect, you know, Ash. I respect Evil Dead. Um, I, I think it's a good franchise. And it definitely, I think, would work as a game. And I'm also up for the idea to put these kind of things in a game. Even if this game only makes it two, three years, I hope it's still, and along with Texas Chainsaw, etc., I hope it's still a something that gets in people's minds where it's like, oh, we can take these kind of properties and just throw them in a game. You know, I've been petitioning for a Scream game for as long as I can remember. You have the Killer Clowns from Outer Space. So even that game, I mean, that's a cult classic movie, very old, very, uh, very under the radar. You wouldn't really expect it. And that's getting a game, Evil Dead. If you would have asked people, you know, five, ten years ago, I don't know. I don't know if, if you would expect something like this. But the, the Predators of the World and Friday the 13th, they've really opened the door, and maybe even Dead by Daylight, from getting these people into the game. They've really opened the door to try these things. And, and I can appreciate, even if the game was terrible, which it's absolutely not. This game is actually really good, and we'll, we'll say that, we'll talk about it in a second. It's still, I think, a good sign that it happened, even if the game were to fall off. Uh, the Well, okay, if it fell off like the next day, that'd be a problem. But the game lasted an okay amount of time. Again, it, it's pretty much dead now, but I think it's a good sign for the future. Let's get these things like Killer Clowns. Let's do a Scream game. Let's do a Chucky or a Friday the 13th. Like These things probably can work. Now, Evil Dead, again, is a, is a more tough situation because it didn't abide by the, you know, uh, 4v1 asymmetrical horror, you know, uh, rules. Now, Texas Chainsaw didn't either. It was 4v3, but Dead by Daylight, 4v1, Predator, right? Uh, Friday the 13th, I think, was 8v1. The idea of a bunch of survivors and then one killer. And this game didn't do that, right? This game, this game took a much more strategic role. And so the game itself... I think this game is awesome. Now, for the purposes of doing this video, I went back in and I tried to play it. Now, here's the deal. There are almost nobody playing this game. On Steam, you can look at specifically Steam, there is maybe like 10 to 30 people a day that play this thing. Now, that's Steam. The game is available on consoles. Is it? Can it do maybe a couple hundred on consoles? Probably. But I would heavily bet that there are less than a 1,000 active players every day across every single platform combined. And that is sad. That, that is extremely sad because the game is on its final legs. But the game itself is really, really fun. So it's, it's a defense kind of game, at least from the demon's perspective, right? You're going around, you're collecting energy, you're leveling up in a really unique way, right, of like a threat level, and you're building traps and scares, and you're trying to terrify uh, the, the humans or the survivors, you know, whatever you want to call them, I guess, in the case. They are looking for their objectives. That is probably the most, um, like, Friday the 13th and those kind of game-like thing. They're trying to look for map pages. They're trying to look for the dagger, and they're trying to build that up. And meanwhile, you're, tr as the demon, you're trying to slow them down. I say you're, uh, by the way, because I have always found my home as the demon 
again, to get ready for this video, went back in. I could not get into a match as the Survivors, okay? I did get into a match, which is odd, because I did get into a match as a Demon, which means there were at least four people playing. But I played as the Demon, and I won my first match after, oh my god, uh, it's probably been like a year and a half at least since I played this game, and I just picked it up like it was nothing. I remembered my strategy. I've made videos on this game when it came out of how to play as the Demon, and I just remembered all that. I was, you know, back in the past two years ago, and Oh my god, I tore them apart. Like I want it. You'll see that footage as this goes on. But it's extremely clever. Like the idea of having these portals and you're summoning enemies and you you summon a boss and there's different kinds of demons and there's different kinds of survivors and they all have their own kind of unique thing about them. And and again, as a survivor, you're going around, you're trying to stock up, you're trying to stay in the light. You don't want to be outside of the light for too too long. You get terrified. You're trying your best to take out the enemies where they come. You're trying your best to avoid the scares. You're doing your best to collect everything to then move on to different stages and the thing is it's actually quite a long match the, the match I played and recorded I, I think was 39 minutes from start to finish it's very long because I it's a pretty long amount of time just in the first kind of stage of the game or the match and then you you know there's more stages than that um, you can stretch it out quite a bit so these are like you don't play this game for like five, ten minutes. This isn't Rocket League where you can get in for five minutes and get out. This is something that you have to invest at least like half an hour if you just want to play one match. Again, the originality. I think it's really, really cool. You're, you're not doing this kind of thing in Texas Chainsaw. And it reminds me why I actually liked this so much when it came out. And because it's the most unique. Texas Chainsaw in the like what we're used to kind of perspective. I think that's the most unique, at least nowadays. Three killers, they are very, very different. J just the way it plays, the, the victims or survivors are actually pretty different from each other versus what we had seen uh, you know, previously. I think it does, it, it tries to reinvent it as much as it can in that genre. Evil Dead, again, just went a completely different direction. It's just a different kind of game than the rest of them, and I really think it stands out. Now, the issue is, Maybe it's too hardcore. Maybe it's too different in the gameplay. Again, it has a lot of Friday the 13th feel to it, but I guess on the demon side of things, you've never really played something like that before. Then, okay, well, why is it not really working? Why is this game, you know, dead after two years? Well, two different reasons. Number one, limiting yourself to one IP is always going to be the issue. And that is the scary part with Killer Clowns. That's the scary part if we ever got a Scream game or anything. And I mean, again, I really want a Scream game. But the issue is you're limiting yourself to one IP, and it's take it or leave it. You're not going to get... Like, Dead by Daylight spoiled people. I, I really think Dead by Daylight created the genre and also maybe destroyed the genre. Maybe we should do a video on Dead by Daylight one day because it's such an interesting game. And not that it's a bad one or, like, it deserves to go away, but... You have so many different properties and franchises, and it always keeps it new, keeps it upbeat. Same thing as like Fortnite. Fortnite adding in anything you can think of always keeps it going and brings in different fandoms. When you're just doing Texas Chainsaw, you can just do that. When you just do Evil Dead, that's you're limited to just that. So if you're not into Evil Dead, now, again, like, I don't actually think you have to be all that much into Evil Dead to play the game, but that's that's my perspective. I do assume and feel that a vast majority of players out there, they see Evil Dead the game, and they are basing their decision to get the game or not get the game off of their knowledge and interest in the property of Evil Dead before they even you know, get into the game or see the game on, you know, whatever ends up happening. And that is tragic. I mean, it that's assumed and that is probably what happens. And it's also very understandable. You know, you go on the store page and, you know, you scroll through and you're looking at the box cover. You're looking at the first just couple. You're looking at the title. You're looking at maybe some of the characters that you see. Very entry-level stuff. This this is just like general people buying things, right? You look at just the, the base thing, and you make a decision right there. If you go deeper, I think you find a very unique and original game that's actually really fun. Very tense. Very strategic. Um, again, there's, there's whole strategies that I myself have created. I'm sure there's others as well uh, for the demon. And... I just don't know how many games have something like that. And even the fact, like I said, different survivors. Many, at this point, because there's been DLC, there's been, you know, map packs and all that stuff. 
lots of survivors, lots of demons. You you got a, a good pick at, at who you want to play as, and all a little bit different. Obviously, the strategy uh, generally the same. It changes just a little bit based off who you're playing as. They added a Battle Royale-like mode. Now, I tried to play that. I've never played that before. I think it's like a 40 versus 1 kind of thing, or like the, it's, it's 40 people, and then it just gets down to whoever's last. Sounds cool. I've never <laughs> seen it, and I've never played it because I tried it, which makes sense because if it is 40 or 41 people you need for it, I don't even know if there's that many people playing at one time, period. So that is, say, like, you know, and I've tried this. I, I say this when I've played, like, the Gears of War games, you know, uh, when I do retrospectives on it. Sadly, nobody's playing Gears of War 2 in 2024. Like, that's just the way it is. Now, Evil Dead, because it multiplayer really strictly like there's ai the ai is terrible in this game so it, it's not even worth like i tried it um and it's just not it's not something i would want to do because the ai is just not smart enough so that kind of eliminates it you basically just have oh i forgot another reason why these games tend to die lack of modes um and i get it because you work so hard to build out the basic thing and you think about dead by daylight there's no modes it's one you fix generators and you escape like that that's it you're not gonna have a capture the flag kind of thing you're not gonna have, it's it's it is what it is texas chainsaw and i again i think that maybe comes down to haunt some of these games but i get it because you make it you work on balancing you work on adding different killers or you know heroes or survivors into it and that takes literally all the work you don't have time to make seven modes for a game would that help these games yeah it probably would honestly but it's it's not feasible it's not something that i would ever expect these games to do now what's the other reason this game is dying well it's actually because they eliminated support period and they eliminated i believe back this past september so saber interactive is the ones who made it but notoriously if that sounds familiar you could say wait a second doesn't Embracer Group own them? And and you just hit the nail on the head. Embracer Group is the one that's you know in charge of all this stuff, provides the funding and all that jazz. And Embracer Group is having a little bit of a tough time recently with just having no idea how to do anything. Um, buying all these studios, spending all this money, relying on business deals for billions of dollars that fall through, and then they have absolutely no backup plan, so everything kind of falls apart. Basically, Embracer Group has exploded and has completely failed. And all of these games and studios, I mean, they've they've hit so many studios with layoffs. They've shut down multiple studios. No studio is really safe. Then when you have this game that was probably underperforming just in general, it does not surprise me that you would not. I get it. You don't want people working on this game for post-launch content a year and a half later if nobody's playing it. And then also, if your head company, you know, the, the ones that are funding it, if, if, if it's on fire, <laughs> the offices are on fire, then obviously there's no money to give you, right? That part is external. That part you can't really plan for. Is it possible that if they did keep going with it, they could somehow find a way to, you know, to bring it all together and to make this game one that lasts? This is that problem, and, and we will eventually make videos, you know, on, like, live service or, you know, uh, those kind of games, but this is a general problem. Um, it never did all that well. This game never stood out. All now, stood out in a quality way. It actually always stood out to me. Even when the first time they showed it, I, I, mean, I made dozens of videos on this game, so I, I want to say I was a supporter at least leading up to launch, and then when the game came out, I played a good month straight. But again, because it's just Evil Dead, because it's just the one IP, because it, you know, it, it just can't reach out. Live service games, there's so many of them. There's not enough time in the day. There's only so many people on planet Earth. You, you're not going to have every game get 20, 30, 40, 50,000 people playing it every day. Not every game can be dead by daylight. Now, if a game is not dead by daylight, you would at least hope that it could, you know, maybe a couple thousand, maybe enough just to keep the lights on. Ultimately, again, number one, this game still didn't do that. And number two, eventually funding just got pulled because the company above them had no idea what they were doing. Tragic, tragic. And the game's not dead yet, but like it, it is this, like it's going to happen. And that is sad because again, one more time, this game is unique. This game is original. This game is, a, in my opinion, this game shows that you can keep doing these IPs, you know, these horror IPs and turning them into games. But you, can, you don't have to do them all the same way. Now, I've constantly pushed for if you do a Scream game, you make it single player. You know, we've never, we don't have that. When you think of 
Friday the 13th, Predator, Texas Chainsaw, Ghostbusters. You know, Ilphonic did that. Ilphonic was a big one, you know, in doing these games, right? All of them online. Many of them 4v1 or some sort of iteration of that. No single player one. Um, you have like the Dead by Daylight one now turning into a single player one from uh, Supermassive. But, you know, I think you can spread your wings a little bit. And for this game, it spread its wings. It did a little. It didn't do it all the way. This is definitely different than any of the other games in the genre. Clearly, it didn't work. But I, I want to believe it didn't work not because of the game itself. Because, again, I know I spent so little time talking about the game itself. It is really fun. It's really engaging. It's really different. It's strategic. It's it, you, in, I guess all of the games are strategic to a sense, but this one just feels different. A little Friday the 13th, at, at least from like the victim or survivor's point of view, definitely is more Friday the 13th, but it's more action-y. There's more shooting. There's more you know hitting. There's more things to collect, right? There, there's different ways of combating the demon. And then the demon's uh, game, you know, sub-game, is just so different than anything that you've seen in any of these kind of things so i i absolutely appreciate it for what it is it's sad that it hasn't lasted and it really didn't last more than a few you know months they added stuff more than after a few months but it really felt like the game came out it had a good you know solid start to it i was excited i felt like there was a community there and that's just how I felt. I don't actually, I don't know if that actually happened. But then a few months later, you know, things started to die. And now, you know, I, I thought this game actually came out before. It, it was 2022. I felt like this game actually came out before then, like 2021 or even 2020. Um, again, this game is probably going to make it to two years. But is it going to make it two and a half or three? That's that's really stretching it. And that's sad. Like, that's a, a problem with the industry. We talked about Knockout City this past year or last year on this channel games that don't even make it two years that lit are all only online <laughs> you know, you're buying it you're buying the game paying money to play it online and then the game doesn't even make it two years and it and it goes away and this game has made it two years but it really hasn't right because there's just not enough people there to support it i don't think you can get the full experience out of this game right now so is it dead officially no but you're not really getting all of the game right now so it kind of already did die if you think about it i guess like that so let me know what you guys think about the game in the comments make sure as always you're subscribed to the channel bell icon turned on i hope to see you all on the next one